there's a couple differences right off the bat in warping as opposed to seven. One, your magnifying glass is up at the top by the beat markers. So right up here, this is where you're going to scan in and out of your track. But we're going to get that closer in just a second. So what I would do now that I've double clicked to make that, that warp marker is now I drag the warp marker to the beat just like that. And I actually find that warping songs manually is a little now, bit... Now as far easy. as scrolling uh, with my loop, basically all I've done is I've created a loop over here of eight bars. I turn the loop on and then I darken this loop area. And then when I hit the page up key or the page down key, I'm able to, to scroll across. It sets the markers next to it and locks them in. So now when I click on this and move left and right, notice it doesn't affect anything outside of that area. So we click, or if you want to take care of all of them, just highlight one and then hit Control or Apple A for all. And then down here you'll notice that it's going to give you uh, all these options that you can do universally to all the clips. Okay, so it looks like the first speed is this right here. So I'm going to set that to 1. And basically what I'm doing is uh, I'm noticing that, you know, the metronome and, and the actual beat are fairly close, but just a little bit off. So I'm coming over here and I'm just kind of pushing these beats here right into their logical place right on the beat. Okay, so that's what we want. Making sure that the first beat is in the right place. Now I'm just going to back up here and we'll back up four bars. Basically I, I go increments of four. So we'll go back four bars and I'll set my I take first this marker there. Take a look at the tempo over here in the clip segment uh, BPM and it's 125.69 so I'm going to enter that up top 125 on, I highlight the loop and then I'm going to hit the page up button to kind of scroll through different parts of the song to make sure the whole song is basically on beat. Go to quantize settings and then current grid the current grid is at one bar so I'm going to quantize to that. I'm going to go 100% here just to make sure, sure everything's locked uh, right on to beat and then I'll hit OK. I like to actually create um, a basic drum beat that I use on most or all of my tracks. If you just have a kick drum by itself uh, you might be lined up with the kick drum but it might might be in an off place and you don't realize it when you're warping and then you find when you're mixing tracks that the uh, the kick is locking into a track uh, where the snare is on another song. So since it sounds like it's lined up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, check the first warp area at uh, 97. And what I find is it's a little bit off. So I'll double click on this to create a warp marker. And I'll go ahead and drag back and play in different parts. And then while that's playing, I'll go over to about 177. That'll get in close. And it looks like this is a little bit off. We want to bring that over here. So we'll double click. Pop it right over. Then I'll check in here to see how it sounds. Sounds good. The next track, this one's going to be a little bit trickier. So we're going to go to this track here. And what I find is that it's just put a ton of warp markers in, which is I can be pretty sure that it's not correct because I go over here to where it detects the BPM and it puts it at 165 BPM. And I know that this song is not at 100. 
65 BPM. And then I'm going to hit control and I'm going to click on number five as well. So when I move them, they're both going to move. You'll, you'll notice that. See, they're both moving. We've created a perfect loop so we know that this, this is accurate. The second thing it does is over here it gives us um, a pretty accurate idea of what the tempo of the song is if the, the song follows this tempo all the way through, which we know it does. So what I will do from there is I'll stop this and then I'm going to come up to the master tempo and I'm going to hit 132. And then I'm going to go over to the fifth warper, which is the last warper in this loop. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to put warp 132 BPM from here. All those warp markers go away. And now it's going to warp as if this song was 132 BPM. That's really good because that is going to get us very close to where we need to be. I'm just clicking in different areas. And then I'll stop it. And it looks like everything's warped really good now. So we'll go over here, hit save. And you've just warped a track that is a little trickier to warp, yeah, but you've solved that problem.